time we're coming to you Teresa we're live good morning good morning good morning how are you oh How's we're sunny Sunday yay we have sun <laughs> after such a gloomy week okay so i have a new microphone i'm trying i'm testing an external microphone so i'm hoping um i was messing around with the replays and um i'm trying to uh, our connection my connect internet connection keeps going in and out so um i'm trying an external microphone to hopefully can improve the sound so you can um i know you can hear me so crisp and clear okay Like I had to turn my volume down. Okay. Crisp and clear. Um, yeah. Cool. Very nice. Very refreshing. Now I just have to work on the vi on the camera. I have an external camera, but for some reason it uh, I couldn't get it to work. So we'll have to work on that later. I don't know if it's any good or not. Good morning, Anne. How are you? Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. We're just we're just getting going. So let me do an introduction for those people who are watching and wondering what the heck we're all doing here. Um, I'm in Brenda Sullivan. I am herbalist here in Connecticut, and uh, they welcome to Herb Talk Live. Welcome back. Uh, I am here to help you navigate the world of herbs and help you live a healthier and cleaner life. And uh, herbs are all things herbs. That's what we talk about, um, among other things. It's a little, little bit of history, but here I'm here to help you, guide you through the crazy world of herbs. I'm here with my co-host, Teresa Valendez, who is a health and wellness coach, and she uh, will give you her latest update and uh, and we have our special guest, Anne, who comes and joins us every morning at early sun Sunday morning on from sunny California. And she gets up out of bed. God bless you, Anne. We love you. And thank you for joining us. So, Teresa, why don't you share with us your incredible news? Hi. <laughs> okay. I suddenly got a lot of noise in my background. And I heard that I'm making an announcement. Is this about my book yes yes <laughs> you have you have to plug your book <laughs> oh thank you thank you hon that's so sweet of you uh so first of all i'm grateful to be here and grateful to be here with you on sundays and i got to make a nice friend out of this deal with you with Anne coming to the show and hanging out with us um i'm a health and wellness coach and uh, I hang out here for all the health tips and love to give some also, but share uh, this space with you and learn so much from you. Um, the book that you're that Brenda's talking about. I, I thought I had it around me. I thought I would show it, but I don't have this journal. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not on camera. It's a heart centered wellness journal, it's part tracker, part um uh, wellness a reference guide part book book and workbook that um i actually just published the undated version so the one that friend is holding um has dates in it for the year of 2022 it's a one-year calendar and tracker um but i just published the undated version so you can start anytime and you get 15 months worth of tracking and wellness and it's heart centered so it's less about the numbers and more about how you feel and uh it takes a lot it's founded upon uh the principles of ifs internal family systems model so that's my book um it's on amazon and it's in bookstores so thank you brenda for offering yeah. the opportunity to share it and if you don't find it in the bookstores ask them to order it i'll have <clears throat> a link in the show notes to to her to both her well the last the first version is that outdated already or can people still order that no both versions are live okay both all right versions are live yep okay so i'll have i'll have links to both 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 versions and if you uh, want to support your local bookstore just um ask them to order it for you and um uh, and they'll get it for you so we have to support our local bookstores too okay 
<clears throat> You're welcome. Thank you. So um, it's Valent Valentine's Day is a couple couple days away. And ladies, are you are you ready for this this topic? <laughs> Um, no, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> well, uh, can I say something that just occurred to me? What? Um, going, yeah, it's like, let's move on, but no, no, let's pause and talk about me. <laughs> just you are to... live, love, you are live. <laughs> I am, but um, I was going to just very quickly go back to the book. I wanted to talk about very briefly how there's a reference section around health and wellness and that you're actually featured in there too. I oh, you. thank you. And a lot of the support and uh, inspiration came from you, Brenda, and thank you so much for encouraging me to put this together, but there's some herbal stuff in there too. So it's really nice when like-minded people get together and produce really nice stuff so thank yeah, you for I, being a source for me well you I, I just i right back at to you say that oh thank you i was a little distracted when you caught me a little off guard there <laughs> you always have to be ready to plug your book you're gonna have to be uh, ready to plug your book and ann you got a book in you too we're gonna get you to write a book uh doesn't matter what what it is whatever your little heart desires uh your your memoir whatever but you you got a book in you too we're gonna get one out of you as well wow that, <laughs> that's a big goal for me but okay <laughs> everybody's got a book everybody you know everybody's got a book book in them um you know think about it and uh i don't offer this to everybody so Teresa knows that but uh you've got a great story um, you know, you can, you know, what, uh, no pressure, no pressure though. <laughs> no pressure, Anne, but she won't stop until you write it. <laughs> Just saying, I don't know how I know this. <laughs> All right. You two ladies will be my mentors. Though. Okay. Yes. All right. Now, if we can only figure out the marketing, the marketing piece of all of this, so we all can retire at a beach house. <laughs> well, it's so much more than that. But uh, yeah, as, as you said, um, I don't know that I'm going to be a professional author, but it has been very rewarding. You are a professional they're, author. They're, you. They're not. Um, it's not about. Yeah. What I'm saying is that it's it's not. People think have this idea that you write a book and you make millions, and that's not how it works. So that's kind of what I was commenting on. But maybe we can use those herbs of yours that are energizing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pumping them in me as we speak. Let me tell you. So and we can channel that energy. Oh no, seriously. So back to our subject. Back to our subject of aphrodisiacs. So. You know, if and I want to stress this before we get going, it doesn't matter whether you're in a relationship or not. Um, <clears throat> it's it's about I think you know being a a woman of of my age and and having lips and being I'm almost married for thirty years. We're going on our twenty blah 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 twenty eighth. 28th year i think this year i do my math my husband would kill me because he loves he has all that data in his head um you know v valentine's day tends to you know it there's a perspective i think this was created by the c greeting card people um as a marketing ploy because after the holidays sales tanked and so there's a little we need to put that in perspective some some people think that this is another Christmas. I've I've have spoken to to women um, who don't who have these expectations um, that they will not accept anything less than a you know a dozen roses and they have to be a certain kind and they're dripping in diamonds and you know what it, it's perspective <clears throat> and um, we see images flashed in front of us tv social media um uh, of of a lot of these aphrodisiacs of these these you know fantasies 
And, um, and you know, there's a deep history in aphrodisiacs because aphrodisiac is, happens to be a, 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 um, herbal, the, the name just, uh, just left my brain, inner energetics. And, um, you know, it, it, we have to think about where the history of all of this is. So, um, we, we want to talk about how, or at least I want to, I don't know about you. <laughs> I just, you know, I, I just kind of tired of the, 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 the marketing, the, uh, the expectations, these false expectations. I don't know about you ladies, but I get kind of tired of that. Um, I think women yeah. have been placed, you know, it could be the feminism in me have been placed to, to these unattainable expectations to be all things to, to, to their, to, to, I don't know. I, I, again, I may be getting off a, a topic here a little bit and, and inserting my own bias. <laughs> well, honestly, I think these holidays, I, a lot of uh, holidays in general, these, um, these marketed uh, celebrations, do set up. There's a reason why we see the spike in um, ER visits and mental health and um, problems that people experience. There, and I'm not saying that it's the advertising company's fault. We do have these expert expectations culturally. And I, while I hear you and I agree about um, <clears throat> your thoughts on, you know, the feminist side, fe feminism side of it, uh, I feel like there's also a huge burden on, on the guys, you know? Um, yes. Yeah. I think there's a huge burden on everybody. And for that reason, I mean, I haven't gone out. I don't like to, I don't go shopping on Black Friday. I don't go out on Valentine's Day. I don't do all of those things because it's just, it's toxic to me. Yeah. It's a boundary that I've created for myself that I don't, I enjoy Valentine's Day. My grandmother's birthday was on Valentine's Day. Uh, we do a lot of nice things and we we plan cozy things at home it's winter it's it's fun it's nice but yeah the commercial aspect of it is very toxic to me so i have a boundary around that yeah i agree i'm i'm the same way i don't go out on black friday um and i yeah we all we all crave to be loved we all crave to to have have it shown um to, to, to have it displayed publicly, um, some, some more than others. Um, but, uh, you know, the, then again, there, there's, there's an emotional side <clears throat> to, to this aphrodisiac, <clears throat> which is an herbal action. Okay. So aphrodisiac is, is, comes from the herbal actions, just like, you know, an expectorant, a diuretic, um, you know, a uh, carmative and nervine, you know, these are all herbal actions that result in some kind of, um, physiological change in our bodies. So are you ready to get a little, a little nerdy with me? A little herby nerdy? I'm going to have a oh, mug. Dear. <laughs> come for the herb nerd stuff. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna get a little herby nerdy. I'm gonna make a, a mug, a, a, a t-shirt, herb nerd on it. Put it on that on there. So, yes. <laughs> little tote bags. I'm an herb nerd. <laughs> wear one like, like that. Okay, well, you know, we've been looking at some of the things. Uh, we've been messing around with some some sayings, some marketing sayings, and so I may I may put together some. Uh, tote bags and t-shirts that says I'm a nerd, herb nerd, you know, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Um, but I've been playing with that in the last week. Teresa and I have been zinging, zinging them back and forth. Even, even Paul got involved. <laughs> he came up with some good ones. <laughs> so, uh, we'll see how it goes. But anyway, so the aphrodisiac is part of your, if you're learning about herbs, aphrodisiac is an herbal action. Okay. It's one of many. And there's certain herbs that will fall within that category. They, some herbs will have, may have, 
you know, three or four or five different herbal actions that they fall into. So they're like multi-purpose herbs. So, you know, if we think about where this came from, um, you know, we can thank the Greeks, you know, those Greeks, those Aphrodite, Miss, Miss Greek queen, a goddess on the air. And then we have, you know, the, uh, you know, every culture had them, Hindus, Chinese, um, they all, they all had, had their, their special, their special, um, potions, they should say. So I'm looking for my notes here. So, okay. So, you know, we have the, the Hindus, the Chinese cultures, you know, they wrote their texts. That's what makes things so interesting is that a lot of these texts were not written down. They were passed through orally in a lot of these cultures. But the Chinese wrote, and it dates back to 2697 to 2595 BC, which is pretty amazing. And the Roman and Chinese cultures documented their belief in aphrodisiac qualities in, in animal genitalia, while the Egyptians wrote tips for treating the erectile dysfunction. So a lot of this <laughs> in my research um, was kind of aphrodisiacs kind of was around the fact that, you know, that old prostate didn't always work as, as it does, which is what a lot of this causes erectile dysfunction. And so um, they found um, ways to help with that problem. So even back in the before 2000, 1000, BC, the dudes were having problems already. So um, some of the stuff that they used were ambrane, which is, um, which I think is like a, some kind of root. Oh, it's the gut of sperm whales. Yum. And then we have bufo toad, which is found in the skin and glands of of, of frogs, which is disgusting. And then you have yohimmine, which is the substance found in the bark of yohim trees in West Africa. And then we have the horny toad weed, which is a Chinese folk medicine. And it's thought uh, useful for treating medical conditions and improving sexual desire, sexual pleasure, and or sexual behavior. And uh, the, of course, the old, the old easy version, alcohol and uh, a marijuana. And so for the foods, this uh, used ginseng. Supposedly, ginseng helps with the sexual desire. Um, but it re they actually researched this. Scientists said that there was lack, yeah, lacking <laughs> inequalities. A ginseng really didn't quite work. So um, that's the historical piece of, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about those, the, the uh, ambine, is that what it is? Ambien, ambine, the sexual glands of a whale thinking, uh, thinking that you're gonna. Yeah. Yeah, no. No. <laughs> the only thing I could, when you said that, I was thinking the first thing in my mind was, Sexual glands? Did they have to try before they got to the whale? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, apparently it's easy. Okay, so basically, what what it boils down to is that any food that resembled something of the male or female anatomy became an aphrodisiac. Now, we talk about. Um, the, these, you know, I, I took this aphrodisiac, aphrodisiac class through the herbal Academy a few years ago. And one of the things that surprised me is that it all comes down to <clears throat> the physical, there's a, an emotional side to, to an aphrodisiac is what you believe in to be true. And then there's the physical side of uh, your physical body and how it reacts to certain foods or herbs. So again, you have to, you have to match the two. So, you know, we, the, we break it down. The body has the cardiovascular, the endocrine, the, the nervous system and the reproductive system. 
and it's you you have to kind of mix mix and match and it depends on what it is that you're looking for and your partner okay so if you are a woman and you're reading these wonderful romance novels and you want to be sw swept off your feet and you want you know you're 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 playing this story in your head um you know you got to clue the dude in or the gal if you're you know whatever um you got to clue the partner in so they know what your fantasy is because you you're going to miss each other and is you're you're going to be disappointed um is same thing with the guy you know if the if his par partner is uh exhausted and ha and hasn't slept or is has a pressure cooker job um they're not and you are you know very physical you want very physical love you are going to, and, and they're not looking for that. You're going to, again, misinterpret the cues. These are what, some of these are called what love languages. You got to know your partner. You got to understand the love language of that partner. And then the both of you kind of have to, it's called communication. After almost 30 years of being together, you got to communicate with your partner to let them know where you're at. Um, and it comes down to that. So then once you understand your partner and where they're at, then you can match the aphrodisiac to that, to your partner. Now, you know, one of the things that I learned is that, as we know, that herbs are not transactional. We have to layer the herbs as well as with our, where we are emotionally in that time and space. So we know that if you take X, you take lavender, lavender is a nervine. It's also an aphrodisiac. If you take lavender, it's, and your, your, your partner is high intensity, that that's not going to work. Or you're overstressed. Um, you may, it may be ineffective. So um, you want to be able to have Calming herbs, if you're looking for um, really aggressive, you know, if you're very physical and you like high energy, then you want to go with the more hotter, hotter herbs. You want to pump up your circulatory system. So people, guys, if you have erectile dysfunction issues, then you really want the more uh, stimulating herbs that are going to pump through your body because that's what you want your blood to start pumping because that's what helps fix the issue. Um, so. <laughs> so what I'm hearing here, what I'm hearing here is a couple of things. I'm hearing that herbs are, it's important to look at the mind body connection and look at what it is you're actually looking for and approach a problem holistically. But also that in some cases, herbs can help with things like ED. But in most cases, you have to look at what your predisposition is for and the herb acts as an accelerator. Yes. So if you're looking, so if you're looking for, if you need more calm uh, or if you tend to be more calm, the, the, the herb isn't going to just magically fix or give you those qualities. It's going to accelerate um, whatever your predisposition is and give you more of it. Yes. Yeah? Yes. 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 So that is the secret to aphrodisiacs. Okay. Some, some people, it'll work, they'll work very well. And other people, you will, it'll flatline. It won't work at all. So yes, absolutely. You sum that up perfectly. Because of all of those other factors. No, it's really, it's 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 really a new perspective. Really, it's 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 helpful to look at it uh, that way, the way you're presenting it, because um, there is a lot more to it. 
And I don't think we really understood it. I mean, in the, in the past, uh, people have considered, have likened it to, you know, I can see how the witches came about. <laughs> if you're boiling the private parts of the uh, whale and serving them up to people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it was big business. Was kind of witchy. <laughs> well, it was yeah, big business back in the yeah. day, back in medieval yeah. times. You know, yeah. and you don't think that these witches are witches. These, these, they're alchemists back in the day they only became witches because the church called them witches because they they didn't want any they they the church wanted yeah. total control over the over the people so that's that's where the the word witches were but there was big business back in medieval times and you don't think that you know the young the young girls who who only their only survival was to marry well that if they targeted a particular uh person that they would go to these these alchemists, these herbalists, and you know, villages were small. You don't think that they didn't know who these people were, who they were, who was targeting who. They would make up these potions, these love potions, and they would slip them in to into these uh, cakes and and whatever, and hopefully they would, you know their 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 you know intended target i would say yeah. target <laughs> it would work <laughs> but it was big business no until the church came along and said you know oh no 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 we can't we can't have you thinking for yourselves um you you have to you know you have to do what we say um and then they banned a lot of these or they put a lot of them to death Unfortunately, a lot of innocent people died over during this time. Um, and then the church decided that they would get into the love love business um, and uh, and make money off of that because, you know, the people had to pay, pay the dues to the church. So. So anyway, we want to be able to stimulate. So once you understand who your partner is and this, uh, yeah, you're going to have to play a little couch potato psychologist. You know, you're going to have to understand who your, your partner is and where they're coming from. And then you can match your, your, and you have fun with this. I mean, last, was it two years ago? I, I didn't do it last year because <laughs> it fell flat on 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 me I, I paul's giving me permission to share this but um i when i was taking the class i was going he he saw the book on the table and he decided to flip through it and of course there's lots of recipes that you can use and next week we'll talk about some of the recipes that you can make um with some of these foods and um he's like i'll be your guinea pig i'll be happy happy to try this. So I'm like, okay, fine. I'll, you want to test out some of these recipes? So I made a, a wonderful love tea with roses and damina and lavender and some vanilla. It's a wonderful tea. And um, I made these little power balls, these little uh, great healthy um, gluten-free, dairy-free power balls and uh, dip rolled in, in cocoa. And what else did I, I made? I think I made a little, little cake or something like that. So we had Valentine's tea. So I set this whole thing up and, um, I gave it Paul, we had a little tea party. So Paul had a couple cups of tea. He ate the, the, the treats and, um, I had to go upstairs for something. <laughs> when I came back, he was sound asleep on the couch. <laughs> Totally out. <laughs> so, I took a picture of that, of him sound asleep, totally passed out, and I posted it on my herbal students' website. And I'm like, well, I, I tried some of the recipes, and this was the result. <laughs> And I can't tell you how many women said, yeah, <laughs> I, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> I totally gave up on my husband. It just didn't work. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so yeah, uh, 
I, I kind of kind of did it on purpose to try out some of the recipes. Um, yeah, so I picked the Nervine, Nervines um, as a low calming just to see what whether it worked. And I can say, um, you can have fun. You can... <laughs> You can have either either way. Um, so yeah. So to get back to our uh, our other stuff, <laughs> um, we have okay. So we have other things, other foods. So let's you know the, the there's you know we talked about the the sensual, the calming herbs, the ad adaptogens, the nervines. So then when we have also the hot foods which are, you know, that provide warmth and heat, you know, such as chili peppers, curry, um, you know, the ginseng, the, the ginger, you can have ginger also cre creates um, heat and gets your cardiovascular system pumping. So <clears throat> you also have, of all things, eggs. Eggs also are um, considered an aphrodisiac. So you have, you know, from fish or birds, um, again, is thought to increase the sexual potency. And then um, you have, you, so again, the senses. So the aphrodisiac also includes the, the aromatherapy, the senses. So you have the, the visual. So you have things that what you're looking at, if it's pleasing, if it's beautiful. Um, again, um, you have you know, honey, honey is considered an aphrodisiac because it has that sensual tactile feeling. Okay. So you're using your hands, you're using your, your, your smell. Does it smell pretty? You have perfume, certain perfumes react and elicit a um, reaction from us. So that's why the perfume companies are so, are so popular. Um, you know, again, their aromatherapy. So when we smell chocolate, what do you, what do you think of when you smell chocolate? Do you think of pleasure? Because it helps that section in our brain, our pleasure section. Um, and chili peppers gets us, gets us going. Um, again, here we go. So avocados of all things, avocados are considered, um, I mean, this dates back to 200 BC. Who knew avocados were that old? In the ancient Ad Aztecs, they thought that the beneficial fats would keep, you know, which also clearly keeps the cholesterol levels low, um, but it also helps with heart circulation. So again, for those that have ED, <clears throat> you know, some of these good oils, these avocados, um, carmidin is an ancient herb. Um, it became popular with the Chinese, Egyptians, Greeks, Persians, Turkish uh, cuisine. Um, it is also warm and spicy and pleasant and has a taste. And again, I I consider carmidin like a warm blanket. I put this in my, my winter chai tea and it just, the cinnamon, the carmidin, um, some of the other spice, the, the pepper, I actually put pepper, pepper, um, whatever you call those, the seeds of the pepper in my karma or my chai tea. Um, and I consider that a warm blanket, like a hot cup of cocoa. It just, it, it warms the body. It relaxes me. Um, and so those are some of the herbs that, that help with my particular disposition. I'm not a hot, uh, pepper fan. I'm not a, somebody who can handle a lot of heat. So it has the opposite effect to me. Um, so, but other people, you know, the hotter, the better. Um, so, and, and another great one is demana leaf. Now this is an incredible herb. I really like this. Now you can add this to your, um, it's a nervine. And you can also, and also maybe an um, adaptogen too. Um, I'll have to verify that one. But Dabina is um, is a tea, is a leaf that you can make in a tea. And it really relaxes you nicely. So you can actually blend that. So for those that have really crazy afternoons or you have children that are coming home from school that are stressing, 
um, you know, add a little demeanor tea to your to your lemon balm and lavender or your uh, you could do spearmint, too, but that might be a little too stimulating. Um, you can you can layer that herb as an extra boost to calm, calm things down and relax. So again, that's one of the reasons why we like afternoon tea. I really enjoy sitting down in the afternoon around four o'clock when everything is everybody, uh, if the house is in transition, you know, Paul's finishing up his work, the nurse is leaving um, for the day and the house, you know, it just kind of gives that nice break. And and I also want to also mention to to those of you who are single, you know, creating some of these, it doesn't have to be an aphrodisiac, but be creating some of these self-care. What are the things that you like for yourself that make you happy, make you, you know, if you like to go skiing and that gives you a charge, then, you know, do that for your, give yourself a treat and go skiing for the day, or you like to go, um, you know, go for a massage. If you want a little more touchy feely, calming, relaxing, go, go for, go ask, go, go to a, a spa and have a massage or get your feet done or your name, you know, Manny Patty, um, something that pampers you, you know, Teresa, I know, that um, you know you're into the self self care. You're a wellness coach. What other things can um, during this? You know, again, I just don't want to talk about sex because it's more than that. Um, this time of year, again, this is where we forget, uh, especially as women, that we need to do more self care. We're always seem to be giving, 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 and I, I want to circle back around to what can we do to help us regenerate to so we can refuel so we can continue doing what we do oops had a little bit of trouble unmuting there yeah that's a, such a vast topic and um i'm going to start at the point where you mentioned um, picking the right herbs for yourself and how we want to potentially accelerate certain feelings. And the same holds true in health and wellness. We want to get more of things that we need um, and there's and less of the things that we don't. And there's a fine balance that we're all trying to achieve. And for each person, that balance is going to be different. There's also balance that we need when we're looking for advice. On the one hand, we would love to have a prescription of take two of these and add a dash of this and a dash of that and it'll help you and it'll fix all the problems because we do want a quick fix as individuals and as a society, but we want a quick fix when we have a pain point. A lot of this, a lot of the magic in this is in slowing down mm -hmm. and slowing down and listening to what we need. That's a lot of the work that I do also. So noticing, do I really need sleep or do I need to let go of some of the baggage that I'm carrying? Mm -hmm. How am I feeling? Where am I at currently? Do I need to relax more? We tend to be a little more on the commercial side around you know, if I get this, it'll fix this. Yeah. And we lose the sense of some of the simple things. Like I was reminded of something simple uh, uh, as getting, giving myself a foot bath. Mm -hmm. That <clears throat> the effects of that go on for like 12 hours. Just mm -hmm. the bath salts, soaking my feet or taking a nice warm bath in bath salts. Because that is going to help me the feeling of floating the feeling of just being in warm water the feeling of having um well uh, we know that bath salts are incredibly helpful to the skin and magnesium and all of that stuff but finding what we need as individuals helps us to kind of look in and regroup and then from that point 
look at the bigger picture. So if you think of somebody who's doing yoga, I'll just use it as an analogy, and you've just you're coming up from center, you've coming up from your downward dog, and you're walking your feet in, and you're bringing your, your head up one vertebra at a time and getting ready to reach out to the sky and look ahead of you. As you're doing that, you're doing that from center, right? This is an ancient mm -hmm. wisdom. This is an <clears throat> ancient knowing. And that kind of sums up a lot of what you were talking about too. Mm -hmm. So looking, especially in the winter time when we've had less vitamin D, less sun conversion, because we have less sun sunlight, a lot of us do, not all of us, people, there are those annoying people who like winter sports and are out all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, getting, <clears throat> noticing objectively what we need, uh, noticing our nutrition, noticing our sleep, our physical needs is so essential. And that's where a cup of tea can be so powerful. Something as simple as a foot bath can be so powerful and from that point to propel us onto what we need further gee i should be doing this a little more often mm -hmm. gee i haven't really been putting good food into my body gee i haven't been holding boundaries really well mm -hmm. so that's kind of a long answer to a short question for you but i wanted to show your audience how all of this comes into play mm -hmm. how it's all relevant and again, just like the subject for today with the herbs, noticing what it is that you need, what is going to bring you back to that center so that you can look out from within. Mm -hmm. We tend to get really caught up in the outside, kind of like on the monkey bars, going from one bar to the next, and we're only looking ahead. Pausing, slowing down, coming back, <clears throat> excuse me, from center, and looking at things from within. I'll stop there for my voice. <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's, you know, that's, that is the secret to having aphrodisiacs work. And that's basically the secret, the secret to, to good health is stopping and looking at yourself and, yes. and slowing down and saying, you know, is this, what do I need? What do I need right now? Uh, do I need a timeout? Do I need do I need that that cup of tea? And again, the the secret to herbalism is the is the layering is is understanding your 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 body, understanding your environment, um, and how herbs can play a critical role in in your health, in in improving your circumstances wherever you may be, whatever level you're at, whether you're you know be starting out or whether you're an advanced, you know, you know a lot about herbs. I mean, this is a lifetime process. I, you know, all the herbalists that I, that I follow will always tell you, you never stop learning. You're always learning. It's never, it never ends. And um, you may know more than you did last year or the year before, but it, it never, your education never ends because there's such deep history and they're, they're, you know, rolling stuff out. I mean, we're learning. I mean, I, if you read the newsletter this week, you know, I had no idea about the Candlemas and St. Bridget and Bridget and Imbolc. I had no idea that that was a tradition, an ancient Celtic tradition that was very much rooted in, in herbs and, and how they would, um, welcome it was like a halfway point i mean in the northern countries of the world there's no light okay there's the you know because of the earth the sun and well you know winter so you know how the earth rotation and stuff they didn't have science they had their lives revolved around the sun the solstices the equinoxes um and and herbs and so they would it was the light the, the, they worship the fire the light and so the goddess of um uh, of bridget is um is the goddess of heart a goddess of light goddess of the sun goddess of poetry she is i think one of the most ancient celtic goddesses in the uh pagan or well, pre pre-christian um world 
And yeah, it was fascinating. I'd never heard of her. I, no, I'd never heard of her either. It wasn't and I follow a uh, an ancient folk myth mythic uh, group, and they started uh, talking about her. And so, you know, again, I, 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 all the links are in the reference links are in the, are in the newsletter. Um, but it, again, herbs play a powerful role in our lives. They always have been. And for, for having a quality relationship or having, you know, and it's amazing how the commercial commercialism has taken some of these ancient ways and has, you know, elevated them into a, 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 a social uh, standard that is unattainable uh, for most women. I cannot, I, I, I stopped even trying to live up to half the stuff um, that, uh, that is out there. Um, and I know that you have too. I mean, it's just, it's like you get reached a certain age ladies. And then after a point, it's like, okay, you know, this is what I'm doing. And if yeah, with me, great. If not, well, you know, um, you know, I just, I, it just, it, it makes me sad to see the, some of these women trying so hard to be so perfect and it's just unattainable at this point in the perfect love and the perfect this and the perfect that, um, to me, it's unattainable and they'll get there eventually. They'll, really, <laughs> they'll figure it out, you know, just do your thing and the rest will come along. And the same thing with, with love and aphrodisiacs, um, they do work in certain circumstances. If you, if your metabolism, if you, if you've been able to identify and um, and uh, work with your body and as well as, as your partner, or as if you're a single person and you just want to do some self care and self love, then um, they will work as well. Any other comments, ladies? That was it in a nutshell. There's so much that we could go on about, but yes, I do love this holistic approach um, to it and also bringing in the history, which you're so good at researching, is it always brings back to me this ancient wisdom. And my voice does not want to cooperate today. <laughs> it's threatening to give out again. I don't know why, but um, it does threaten, it does come back to this ancient wisdom and all of this cool stuff that you find that we're still learning about today, right? Mm -hmm. We're still, our medicine has evolved, herbalism has evolved, and we are still learning. And we always kind of pause back at this mind-body connection. Yeah. And the mind-body, of course, is nature and nurture. So there are so many dimensions. We cannot expect a a non-dimensional solution to multi-dimensional problems. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk a little bit of some specific herbs. So herbs for support. So the the cardotonics, which are again another herbal action in that category within the aphrodisiacs. So cardotonics, if you want, you really get your blood blood flowing. We have hawthorn. You can do the leaf, flower, or berry. You have garlic. You have linden. You have ginkgo. Now, if you want a circulatory stimulant, which is, again, another herbal action, you can do cataba, C-A-T-U-A-B-A, which is a bark. And then you have cinnamon and ginger, which is a rubefacient. And then for calming herbs for support, you have the, the adaptogens. Now, adaptogens are for people that have mild, that are, well, not for people, but it's great. They're great for a mild a depression. Um, so you have ashwanga, you have cordyceps, which is the, the, um, the mushrooms. You have stimulating adaptogens. So you have calming adaptogens and then you have stimulating adaptogens. And you have cisandra, Asian ginseng, 
And the endocrine tonics, because again, our endocrine system, if you have a low thyroid or you're metapausal or, you know, your hormones are totally out of whack. If you're a woman, same thing with the guys, guys that have hormonal issues. Sometimes they have low te testosterone. You have, uh, Maka and, um, I don't know what this and epi 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 dumb drum dumb dumb and dumb and e p m e d i u m however you pronounce that um and that's a leaf and i don't know i don't know about that or but it's a new one on me then we have relaxing I yeah i've never heard of it again we can always research it we'll find out so then we have relaxing nervines now i use I have years of experience using both the American and the Chinese version of this herb, and I really like it. But people, um, it's great for for people for women who are having hormonal issues and can't sleep. Now, again, if you're taking prescription medications, you really need to make sure that there is no counter, you know, counter interactions because again, you don't you. Sometimes herbs will make a medication levels rise in the body and some will reduce, make them low. So you, you could either have too much or too little. Um, some have no reaction at all. So it's always good to double check with your doctor um, or your health licensed healthcare professional who has a database that can go in and double check to make sure there's no interactions. Um, so I have this both for my, my daughter, who has severe seizure disorder, among other things. So I know that both of them are safe, and I have verified this with her doctors. And it's Skullcap. Skullcap I love. Skullcap has been a great, but I use it for sleep. Okay, it helps you fall asleep, and then it helps you stay asleep. And the American uh, Skullcap, I find, is not, after a while, sometimes you need a little bit more. And so the Chinese skull cap is a little more stronger. So I, I've switched to the Chinese um, and I find that that helps more. Another favorite of mine is blue vervain, another one. So I take the combination. So I take three at bedtime. I take 5-HTP, which is a um, amino acid. I take the Chinese skull cap and then I take the blue vervain. Um, at once. And I tell you, you fall asleep and you stay asleep for a solid block of time. And I find that that has worked well. Now, it's an aphrodisiac as well. And it's not going to work. <laughs> if you're planning to do something after you take it, because you're going to be sleeping. Um, so again, you understanding the herb and understanding what you want to use it for <laughs> makes a huge difference. If you're looking for to stimulate yourself, you're forget it. You're gonna put yourself out. So you need to uh, <laughs> you need to be careful. Okay, milky oats. Oh, and then we have Demina. Demina is also in the same category, uh, but I like it as a as a uh, tea as a afternoon tea to kind of like take the edge off of everything. But I'm not looking to fall asleep. Um, milky oats is another great herb. I use that. I grow it in the garden and I put that in a lot of my teas, uh, because it's a great tonic, uh, for, especially for women. And it also, again, it's a mild, um, nerving and it kind of helps you take that edge off. So it makes a great, another great herb to layer into your teas versus having it for bedtime. Um, and then they have the wood beat, beat, beat me. Um, again, I don't know about that one. It's a new one on me. Another reproductive tonic that helps with, especially women who are going through menopause or if you're pregnant, again, talk, consult your doctor. A lot of, a lot of these herbs, if you're pregnant, I don't recommend. Um, but I did drink this when I was, um, helps with the uterus, strengthen the uterus walls when you're about to give birth is raspberry leaf. Raspberry leaf is a wonderful, uh, herb that, um, uh, and again, I grow that in the garden and I harvest the leaves. Of course, the birds eat all the, all the raspberries. So I never get any, or I get few, uh, and then saw palmento is another reproductive tonic. Again, if you're pregnant, you need to talk to consult your doctor to make sure that the herbs that you're taking are not going to 
you know, induce uh, labor. Um, so you got to make sure that that's, that's good. Okay. So I have some books, um, that I, uh, that I have some herbal books. Are you ready ladies? Yes. Okay. I'm having an issue muting and unmuting. Sorry. That's okay. Thank That's you. okay. Um, so if you really want to get into the deep dive into this topic, I have a few books to that I can recommend. And uh, one of them is called The Sexual Herbal, Prescriptions for Enhancing Love and Passion. And um, again, it's, it's going to talk about the, uh, the physiological piece of your body. And a lot of this is not going to be a how-to book, guys. It's going to talk about why your body is doing what it's doing and why it's not. And um, I find it to be, you know, pretty interesting. It uh, kind of got, you know, it has, uh, talks about the, the, you know, massaging the feet and relaxing, which is something that you, you mentioned, Teresa, about doing a Epsom salt yep. bath. Um, again, salt water. Again, this, this, you know, when you talk about doing your giving yourself a, a, a bath, again, the salts help ground us. We go back to that, that that episode that I talked about about grounding. It's putting our body back into into balance, and um, a lot of this stuff. I mean, I just find that it's like an evolution. It's it's like a big wagon wheel. And we all kind of seem to be circling around. Um, and I that's one of the reasons why I love herbs so much is because we get so frazzled and so out of balance. And there's so many different ways that we can approach helping us to just reground ourselves, rebalance. So um, yeah, foot baths with yeah. magnesium. So this is by Bridget Absolutely. Mars. She is a registered herbalist. So another good book. And then the other book that I have is, this one is fun. This is Making Love Potions, 64 All Natural Recipes for Irresistible Herbal Aphrodisiacs. And so I had a lot of fun with this book. Um, there's okay, tell us. <laughs> <laughs> there's a whole lot of things in here that you can do, you can make. So we from it, for instance, are you ready? I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> you can make edible body butters if you're into that sort of thing. Um, you can make um relaxing bath teas. So again, um you, if you're into taking a bath, um, again, I don't want to clean out my bathtub with all the stuff. I've done a lot of this before. But here we go. Milky bath salts. So you can take three quarters cup powdered milk, <clears throat> three quarters cup sea salt, one cup dried or two cups rose petals, and 10 drops of essential oil. And you can mix it all together and put it in your bath. Um, if you're looking for stimulating um, versus relaxing, you can do a cinnamon, ginger, and orange bath salt, which has baking soda, sea salt, ground cinnamon, ground ginger, uh, orange peel, jojo jojoba, sunflower almond, or your favorite oil. Now, one of the reasons why they, they do... Uh, they recommend jojoba or uh, sunflower almond is because it's neutral. The, the scent is neutral. So you don't want to put in olive oil or something, some oil that is overwhelming. Um, two drop or three drops of ginger essential oil and three drops of sweet orange essential oil. I kind of like the Valencia orange if you're into essential oils. The Valencia orange to me sounds is a lot more stronger and potent and um, is a little more um, uh, power, you know, fragrant. Again, safety with the essential oils. You do not put them directly on your body. You have to 
dilute them. She has a little warning in here. I just saw it um, in the back here about essential oils. You can also use hydrosols, um, spritz, spritz them on your body. I That's what I do. I use my hydrosols a bath, as a after bath. Um, uh, I don't know, spray. Um, you can make solid perfumes. You can make classic English lavender perfume oil, or they have other blue velvet perfume. You can make perfumes. Um, you can make body mists. You can do all kinds of stuff. You do vanilla spice. You can make powders, body powders. You can do passion fruit punch. Sangria. I like sangria. You can make homemade sangria. You do the little alcohol. Yeah. Sangria is fun in the summertime. Yeah. I'm not... Uh, I'd rather have a cranberry hot toddy or something like that. They have cherry kissing cordial or sip and kiss tea. Um, you know, sparkling cranberry lemonade, hibiscus tea. Hibiscus tea is nice. I have, I make that. So yeah, there's lots of fun. I mean, have fun, but don't, you know, don't have those expectations. Like I said, you're not going to, it's not a trend. Herbs are not transactional. If you take X, Y, May may or may not happen, or it may take a while for it to happen. Maybe, you know, if you keep taking it weeks, and then you'll notice that your body has has enough of whatever the chemical is in that particular herb to start having, having the effect. Um, another book that I have, again, I am um, The Real Self-Love Handbook by Andrea Pennington. She is a medical doctor. Uh, a proven five-step process to liberate your authentic self, build re uh, re resilience, and live an epic life. Um, I found this book to be interesting. Um, I would love to have a book of the same, similar title written by you, Teresa. Hint, 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 hint. This is your next book, love. See, Anne, see what she does. <laughs> Yeah, Where, no. my dear. Where? <laughs> no, thank you. No, I said beware. Oh, I okay. <laughs> well, yes, that looks absolutely wonderful. And yes, you know that um, I'm really passionate about that. So thank you. You're such a good um, coach. <laughs> <laughs> just, just thought I'd share. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to find the table of contents here to give you an idea. I mean, one of the things that I flipped open to, you know, we are so ashamed of our bodies. We're so critical of our bodies. And I was listening to a podcast the other day. And I, again, I don't remember this commercial. I don't know, Teresa, if you remember, but I guess several years ago, uh, the Dove uh, soap company was doing um, a whole campaign about your, our different bodies. And they interviewed a group of women and asked them to describe themselves, describe their bodies, describe how they look like in their bodies. And then they um, asked sketch artists to, who, who did not, who couldn't see them. They could only hear what they were saying, uh, sketch what they look like. And then they had, another group of people interview who just ask them to describe the same group of women and their bodies. And then the sketch artists went in and they sketched what their, what these people were saying about these women. And it was interesting to see the difference in the, in the, in the, in the pictures from these sketch artists, because the women who described themselves, they weren't, as comp, they weren't as pretty. They weren't as they they considered themselves uh, unattractive, versus the people who were describing their friend um, as beautiful, as lovely. And so it the contra that kind of you know had me sit back and think. You know, we we are critical of our bodies. Um, we we need we need to stop stop doing that. Um, and that's where you come in, my dear. You teach us how to be, how to be uh, kinder, and um, and help us with with the mental piece of it. 
So, you know, it's a great book. I like it. Um, but I'd love to have, a, I'd love to read uh, one of your books, Teresa, on the same topic, since this is what you're, you do. So, ladies, any other thoughts, questions, comments? No, this is, uh, this is lovely. I can't wait to see the recipes um, next week, right? Is that our upcoming Yeah, topic? that's... Are you going to break it down into recipes and stuff that we can... Yeah. So are you looking for food? Or are you looking for, um, you know, bath and body products? Are you looking for a combination of both? Um, yeah, bath and body products are amazing. I mean, I think a combination of, of, of all of it, uh, whatever you got, I mean, you always pleasantly, there's always such a pleasant aspect uh, to all of the stuff that you bring forward and i'm always surprised and i just love all the stuff i mean so there could be a, a tea and um ba uh, body stuff and whatever you got i'm always okay. like oh this is so neat she's done it again <laughs> well we could get into a little bit of the victorian the language of flowers which i find to be Ooh. fascinating you know back in the day um, before we had internet and telephone and all that stuff, letters would be, you know, secret lovers would be sending a flower and there would be meaning to it. So I found that during the Victorian age, you know, I don't know if you're watching the Gilded Age, um, the, the mini series, um, that's a time period where I'm kind of, I'm kind of stuck in. I love that time period of the Gilded Age and, um, it's, uh, so yeah, during that time period, there was there was a lot of of secret lovers sending flowers, and you know, yellow meant one thing, red meant another. Um, if you sprinkled um, <clears throat> basil, I mean, I'm I'm reading this is a book from the Book of Valentine Re uh, Remembrances from Adelma Simmons from Capperlands Farm. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar with Capperlands, that was a, an herb farm here in Connecticut, uh, Coventry, Connecticut. She has since passed away 20 plus years ago. The farm is unfortunately is no longer uh, with us. It has been sold and probably will become a, uh, unfortunately, uh, a new housing development. It's a, she had a beautiful gardens. I've, I was there a couple times. I've met her, Adelma. She was a prolific writer and she was a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> she was a little intimidating, you know, this little old lady who was like four foot nothing. And um, so anyway, she wrote, she wrote, I have almost all her books. So she has, um, writes a lot about some of the, the uh, history behind the symbolism of a lot of these herbs. So we can get into that a little bit. Uh, basil seems to be, uh, has a deep, deep uh history not only the regular greek basil you greeks again you guys are everywhere um uh, but also the hindu version holy basil which is another delightful nervine i love holy basil holy holy basil is uh one of the a sacred herb th with the hindus and it is just a I'll, um, I add that a lot to a lot of my, like my mixes, like my seasoning mixes, there's basil in it, but it's holy basil versus the Greek, Greek basil or the Italian basil. So we can get into a little bit of that and some of the, um, the meaning. So if you're get basil dip, that could be either we could, I could love you, hate you, or it could be you're poor <laughs> or I'm poor, <laughs> whichever message you want to portray. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so it could keep you get back guessing if I serve you a sprig of, of, of basil. <laughs> now, what does she mean by this? <laughs> so, so, yeah, it's always kind of fun to, you know, the Victorian, you know, you could have a whole table spread with all kinds of, of foods with symbolic meaning with flowers and, you know, just confuse the heck out of your guests. 
<laughs> or not be real direct. <laughs> Well, rosemary is, is a remembrance. You know, you, you would find rosemary on gravestones um, back in the day, or you would find hedges of rosemary yeah. in the Mediterranean. Yeah. Do, so, do you see that in um, in Greece? Do they, yeah, do yeah, they yeah, put that around in cemeteries? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, there's not a lot of space. Cemetery uh, space, is, uh, space is at a premium um, in Greece, but yeah, it is considered, it is seen as you know they'll get a couple of sprigs and put it around um yeah hmm. absolutely it's still i didn't know if they still did i've never seen it in graveyards i've seen the little stones um on the graveyards which has a whole nother symbolic meaning in the jewish tradition it started in the jewish tradition with the, when you see stones placed on on um, headstones so uh depending on which which tradition you you want to uh believe in either you're holding them down or you're letting them up or whatever so that was interesting all right ladies it's 11 past the hour anything else that you would like to add to our little aphrodisiac talk hopefully i didn't get off too much on a tangent and you were nicely inspired to try some of this stuff This is wonderful. I don't know. Anne has has been uh, uncharacteristically silent, so I don't know if she's having uh, connectivity issues. I haven't gotten any messages from her. So um, no, this was been this has been another amazing Sunday. Lots of cool stuff, and I just love seriously how you we geeked out on a lot of this stuff. You go into these all these different directions and do all this research and uh i'm always amazed so thank you and it does come back down to center right all yeah. this stuff is great stuff and just yeah take in what works for you and leave the rest and stay curious yes and have fun i mean i have so much fun playing with herbs and doing you know, trying different things. I mean, there's no right or wrong. If you understand the power of that particular herb and you learn how to, to, uh, to layer it, then, um, you know, the sky's the limit and it's only going to enhance your health, which is what I'm all about. I'm out here trying to help you understand how herbs can empower you and how, and, and have a healthier and, and, and life has it happier, healthy, happy. I mean, I'm all for it. If I, you know, if I make one of those goals and I've achieved the whole purpose of why I'm spending all this time, time online as I hit my microphone, sorry about that people. Um, you know, then I've achieved my goal, uh, in helping people learn because I wish I had this. I mean, I think that was the one, the one person that has inspired me is Adelma Simmons and, and her, and her work. She would have these lunches in her living room for years. I mean, this is back in the day before um, health department stopped her. She, they blocked her because she didn't have a commercial kitchen. Um, and, uh, you know, that's what she was doing. That's what one of the things that she was trying to do is bring in the history, bring in. Um, so when people were, were in their herb gardens and they're growing stuff, they would have this rich background. They would understand that, you know, basil could have so many different connotations, so many, you know, not only does it taste great and it helps enhance the food that you're eating, but also has these powerful um, health benefits behind it, especially the, the type of version that you, that you grow. If you happen to be growing holy basil, you're, you're growing a powerhouse, uh, of, uh, of nervine of it, that's going to help only calm and enhance, enhance your life. So yeah, in a nutshell, there you go. Thank you. So Anne, be quiet. Are you okay? Did you go back to sleep? <laughs> yeah, no, I just mentioned that I think she's having connectivity. Oh, issues. okay. She's been uncharacteristically silent. So I think she's, uh, I think we're just going to let her be. Okay. All <laughs> right. She usually sends a message if she has an issue. So I haven't heard from her. But uh, yeah. Yeah, no, this has been great. Thank you. Oh, there she is. Oh, there she is. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Uh, have a wonderful Sunday today. 
Yes, yes. Hopefully, sun sun is shining out out where you are. All things yeah. are well, and things are going well. I am recovering, and I had a CT scan a few days ago. Oh, and that's uh, comforting to know that I don't have other issues. Good, wonderful. Yes. Congratulations. That's wonderful. So uh, um, you sound good. You sound healthy. Are you? So things are going well. Not that I want you to divulge your personal business here, but things are going well with you. Yes. Yes. Good. I I think Chinese herb is helping me, and I mentioned it last time. So wonderful. I'm、yep. so glad to hear that. Um, and Anne's also going to be helping me、um, learn about、um, when we in May. I've asked Anne to help me with the、um, the washing of Buddha. This is a whole nother、uh, layer of cultural、um, that I'm not familiar with. That I'm hoping to learn so much more is、um, how herbs and and flowers and the whole process of、um, of, of washing the Buddha and what that means. Um, uh, in May, we're going to push that out to May. I was looking for different cultures and what they do in the spring to welcome the spring. Every culture has their own traditions and、um, and herbs that are also play. Again, it's the world of herbs and and just how we use them to center us to enhance our lives. And again, I'm just I'm geeking out on all this stuff, and I really, I really am looking forward to learning more. And Anne's agreed to help help explain some of this stuff, so I'm looking forward to that. Awesome, wonderful. All right, Anne, did you want to say something more? Oh no, no! I'm looking forward to it. Yep. Wonderful. All right, ladies. Thank you very much for for joining me. And you guys have a wonderful rest of a Sunday afternoon. And and I hope it's sunny and warm out where you are. It's sunny here, but it's cold. But that's okay. We're expecting a little warm. We're going to be in the 40s this week, so I'm looking forward to that instead of the the teens and 20s. And um. So you you wanted to say something more? It is sunny out, so it will be good to go outside. Yeah, go for a walk or something. Good for you, son. Get your Sunday walk in. Yep. Thank you, lady. All right. Have, have a, a great day. Thank you. Thank have you. a nice, hi, nice have rest. All right. Catch you later. Bye. Okay. Bye. Okay. I just want to say thank you for joining me again for another Herb Talk Live. I'm Brenda Sullivan, herbalist, and I'm here to help you navigate the world of herbs so you can have a healthier and happier life. And、um, next weekend show, we'll be talking about、uh, aphrodisiac recipes. I'm going to do a deep dive into,、um, well, not a deep dive, but I'm going to share some of the recipes. That I like, and if you're looking for some bath and body or massage oils, we'll get into that as well, and some teas.、Um, and you know, we'll do both sides. We'll do the cardiovascular, the kind of get your heart pumping, and then we'll do the the calming. If you're overstressed, you just really want a nice, sensual, relaxing、um, uh, experience. Then we'll we'll get into that as well. So thank you for joining me again. And、uh, if you like what you heard. Please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps with the with the algorithms. The YouTube gods out there with the algorithms, and they will recommend、um, this、uh, this show. So thank you. Have a great week, and love you guys all. And we will catch you next time. Bye.